Hey, welcome back to the channel. So, you have a favorite SNES game that you've been dying to play, so you pull that old console out of the closet, and you go to plug it in, and you notice the power connection is broken out of the back. Well, it's kind of a common issue since it's a fragile, uncommon type port. Fortunately, it's not horribly expensive or horribly difficult to replace. But it is a tad fiddly, and if you are attempting it your first time, it could be a little rough. But if you stick around, we'll show you how to get that done. All right, on the bench today, we have a Super NES. Um, I don't think I've done any videos on these guys just because, well, they're really pretty rugged. All the time I get people asking if I can you know, bring them in and do a restoration on them and, and that kind of stuff. But honestly, uh, the time involved, it, it's hard to put a price on it. I'm all for the restoration process and making these things look nice, but um, that's a labor of love and um, that's up to uh, you guys to do it yourself. Uh, my own personal one's probably at least this yellow. But one thing you'll notice is the shell here is yellow and the shell here is white. And uh, same thing. It's just, you know, whatever they used in these plastics, they just weren't real stable. But anyway, we're not here about talking about cleaning this guy. We're here about fixing it. So one of the common issues that we have with the SNES is the power jack. Um, it's kind of an unusual beast. And let me see, here's my SNES power cord and that's the one we'll need. And if you look here, it's not a, a standard connection. It's a big fat barrel with a fairly large opening and a center pin where, you know, something like this, which is a, a standard NES, but um, a splitter. This is a for when I work on Sega CDs, because you have to have it in the Genesis, the CD, and then if you have a 32, actually gotta have power for that too. But here's a kind of a standard barrel connector. So you've got an open pin here and a, a, an outer shell. Um, as you can see, this one's unusual. Now, the one we're gonna use, a replacement, is from, uh, this one happens to be from Repair Box. Um, they've come from a few different sources and, and uh, they all seem to be okay. Now, as you can see, we've got to replace the entire back part because it's not a standard jack. It's actually part of this housing. And it's a non, it's a non standard type connection, as we were just saying. So while this is not a hard procedure, it's kind of a pain in the butt because we really have to dig into it to remove this entire part to replace it. So I'm going to set that there. And, uh, you know, of course, let's get started on that. This uses standard game bits if nobody's been in it yet. All right, I think we have one that somebody's messed with and it's the head is stripped. So I'll be right back after I get that one out. All right, I got the, uh, the strip screw out. It took a little bit of force and it was too fiddly to bother with putting on video. So from here, we got a bunch of just regular Phillips screws. Uh, a standard, you know, number two Phillips will do just fine. All right, that got us the rest of the way apart. Um, some of the, uh, the early ones had this um, separate sound module. Uh, I believe it was Sony who made the chips for them, or Yamaha. Um, but there were a few variations on it. This one actually says Mitsumi. Um, but they incorporated this into the main board later on for uh, cost savings. So. We're now at the main board. Um, 
And we just need to remove this screw and then we're gonna have to desolder this port and we should be able to just kind of wiggle it off. All right, so we got a regular chisel tip. We're gonna bring our heat up just a little bit um, to 400. Probably a little hotter than we need, but uh, you know, we'll get the old solder flowing and, and um, it'll help it wick up onto our solder braid. Okay, there's one. And you can see on those old terminals, there was just a ton of solder. And, um, you know, needless to say, it helps to, to go ahead and preheat the lug. Take your time and you can get all the solder up and out of that big hole. Let's see if we can get that to pop up. Here we go. And sometimes it's easier to get in and trim the pins, but in this case, we got it out. Okay. The rest of these items have a little bit of flex to them. So, you know, you could put a little bit of pressure getting those contacts up and out. So let's see, I got the new connection and we can just put it in the same way it came out. they start to come down you can see they kind of have them bent at an angle but it's kind of on purpose so let me put these on so I don't have to stick my head in the shot and we can kind of just bend them into place as it goes into position like that and they'll come through the board and we can bend them flat and since we're here we can put in this screw to hold everything in place. And the final step of this is to just solder it down. Since our holes were clean and we got rid of all the old flux, just feed it a bunch of solder. Like that. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, this one isn't hard, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. And now you can see, where'd our cord go? Here's our cord. We got a nice, 
new connection and uh, now I gotta actually find out if this one works. But that's the procedure on how to change the, the port on an SNES. It's gotta come the whole way apart and it's a bit fiddly. And honestly, after you pull the solder up, if you use some flush cutters and trim off the, um, the legs flush with the board, it's gonna come out even a little easier. Um, like I said, from here, it's just a reassemble and a testing. So, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and make them down below. If you like the video, please give us that thumbs up because it helps the whole algorithm. If you have to give us a thumbs down, make a comment. Tell us what we can do different and we'll try to change the way the content's being presented. Don't forget to hit the bell and hit the subscribe. I appreciate everybody here today and I'll catch you on my next video. Thanks. All right, stop yelling at me. We'll go ahead and see if this one works. So I put the power in, we found the cord, I turned over to our comp video. It's Super Mario. There. Now you don't have to yell at me about not showing the actual repair. Anyway, once again, thanks for joining me.